We just finished up a really good day at church and I just have some ideas, some thoughts on multi-site video teaching. As we are broadcasting to two and soon to be three permanently weekly campuses simultaneously, what are the best practices for that? I know a lot of people are going multi-site. There's like 5,000 churches that are multi-site churches these days. That's at least two sites or more. For those of you who are doing video in that, there's some really, really good things that you can keep in mind to make sure that you're doing the best you can. So we'll talk about that today at preachingdonkey.com. How do you kill it at teaching in a multi-site video context? And just to clarify the terms, there are some multi-site churches where there are live preachers at each location. So for, for this video and our purposes, I'm not talking about that model. I'm talking specifically about video venues where the preacher is in one location and is preaching live and the other locations are receiving that video and the sermon content is on video in the other locations. That's the model that we use at my church. So when we preach, it goes live in the moment to the other campuses. With that model, I wanna talk about what are the best ways to execute on that, and especially if you're the one preaching, what are some things to keep in mind? The first thing I would say is look at the camera. Look at the camera, and the reason why is because when you look at the camera, you are making eye contact with everybody at the other locations. Now, if you're doing image magnification at your campus that you're speaking from, then you're also making eye contact with everybody in the room that you're in. Because if you, you we do image magnification, that's basically just where you have cameras in the room on the speaker and that feed is being put on the big screens in the room. It's called image magnification or iMag. If you've done this before, you know that the people in the room, if you do iMag, they're looking at the screen, like they're watching the screen. And it took me a while to get used to that when I first started preaching at a church that does image magnification. I'm looking at them and they're looking at the walls next to me and behind me. And I'm like, wait, wait, am I that boring? And I go, oh, wait a second. They're looking at me on the screen. So when I actually make eye contact into the camera, I'm looking right at them. So the first thing is look at the camera often and it can seem unnatural at first because it feels like you're ignoring your, your audience. When you look at the camera, you're just making eye contact with them by way of the screen. So that's, that's really important. And to do that, just as a side note, if we do a two camera shot, it's a simple thing. We have a, we have a toggle light that just lets us know there's a red light so you know which camera is live. So if you're preaching, there's never any doubt about which camera is, is watching at that time. So you wanna make sure that you have that down so that when you know how to look at the camera. Number two, address the other campuses, okay? So this is a really important thing that we do right off the top. If, you're, if you've ever been at a, a campus that's on video, it's actually a pretty natural thing. It doesn't seem like it would be, but if you've ever been at a church where you're watching the sermon on screen, very, very quickly into the sermon, you forget that you're watching a screen, you forget that there's not a live person there in the room, and it just becomes normal and becomes natural. But even with that, when the sermon first begins, it's really great to have the pastor address you. So if you're at the video venue, we have a, a North Campus that most of the time, that's where the, the video comes from, that's where the live speaker is. Although today it was at the East Campus, but most of the time it's at the North Campus. And we have an East Campus and a West Campus. So if you're at the East Campus or the West and you're watching on video, to have the preacher say, hey, everyone at the East Campus, everyone at the West Campus, it just adds that layer of, oh, we're a part of this, you're speaking to us. No, we're not listening sitting in on you speaking to the people that are in the room with you, this is actually for us as well. Just engaging them in the same way that you would do in the room. Because again, with multi-site, you want everybody at each location, including those watching online, because that could total just as many people as in any one campus. You want all those people to feel like you as the communicator have them in mind. Like you're, you're including them in the process. Number three, uh, beware of demographic differences. If you're preaching from one location, you've got a campus across town 
and the demographics are different. You preach at a location that's very affluent, but other campuses, the people that are listening in are coming from locations and campuses that struggle a little bit more socioeconomically. You you don't want to make blanket statements about, well, all of us are just, you know, we know what it's like to, to be stuck in the upper middle class grind or all of us as we pull into our garages at the end of the day well maybe the people across town don't have garages and they don't they're not upper middle class and they they have a different set of challenges you just want to make sure that you're not making blanket statements that don't apply to everybody across the board it's okay to give those examples but you just want to make sure that you're including the experiences of everybody else one big thing to avoid do not make references to specific people in the room you're preaching and you got other campuses listening in and you say like John over here or like so-and-so what that does is it just signals to the other campuses oh yeah we're watching something we're spectating and we're watching something that we're not really a part of you don't want people to feel like they're just listening in on something that you're doing you want them to feel like they're a part of it too make sure that you're aware that anything that you reference that's in the room needs to also be true in the other room. So if it's not, leave it out. Similarly to that point, and this is really important to us, if if you're going to say right after the service in the lobby today, well then it needs to be in the lobby at all the other campuses. So one way around that is do that during, if there's something specific to your campus, do it during your welcome time when your campus pastor gets up there or when your campus pastor closes it. But you as the preacher, be very careful about what you reference being in the building or in the lobby if it's not also in all the other lobbies as well. And finally, I'll say this. One really great thing to utilize is the TV on a stick. Now, I I don't know what this is actually called. I just call it TV on a stick because we we all saw Andy Stanley pioneer this idea years ago. But it's basically a TV cart that sticks up and a big fat TV is on it right next to you and that's where your scripture is, that's where your graphics are, that's where your main point is. All, anything you're going to do is right there and you can reference it. The really great thing about utilizing that when you're doing multi-site is when you have a camera shot that has you as the speaker with a big TV next to you and I'd recommend about a 60 inch TV that looks really really good. 65 is probably okay. Any smaller is probably too small. Any bigger starts to look like it swallows the the communicator quite a bit unless you're a really large person and so 60 inches is really that sweet spot and you get you get a great shot of that tv and you as the communicator standing next to it and that looks really good at the other campuses that way you're not having to worry about lower third graphics you're not having to worry about making sure that everybody's on the right page all you have to focus on is getting that shot we do two shots and one of them has the communicator with the screen next to him and the other one is just a shot that is a little bit more free with you see the tv in the background but you don't get a, a perfect view of it because in that moment you don't need it as much so tv on a stick i'll have a link in the description to a really good tv cart that i have found to be one of the best out there that we use and you can take a look at it in the description those are my points of advice for multi-site so again Look at the camera because you're making eye contact every time you do. Address the other campuses. Make sure that you're cognizant and aware of demographical differences between each campus. Don't reference people that are in the room you're in because it doesn't apply to everybody and it just makes them feel like they're spectating. And then finally, TV on a stick makes it really, really work. And so definitely check out that setup, even if you're not doing multi-site. TV on a stick is just, it's, it's revolutionary. If you've never done it, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal way to communicate and to preach. So I'm back home now, but I want to leave you with one last thing. And that is, it's really, really good to have a contingency when you're doing video preaching. What I mean by that is what happens on Sunday when the video feed goes down at one of the campuses that typically receives the video feed live. The easy way around this, what we do is on Wednesday, we have a staff service and we actually preach the message like it's gonna be preached on Sunday. And we record that message and we wear the exact same clothes 
and that recording becomes the contingency. It also serves as an evaluation because the staff is able to hear the sermon and talk about what worked, what didn't work, what really stuck out, what really empower, what really inspired them, what needs some help, what needs some clarity. All of that happens. It's a really, really great feedback session, but the primary purpose of it is to have that contingency so that if something goes down in the live feed, the, the campuses receiving that feed can just toggle over to the pre-record in the moment and we keep on running. And so make sure that you find out what is the way that we build a contingency maybe for you. It's that you have your campus pastor ready to go to walk up and just finish the sermon out. Whatever it is, just make sure that you have a plan because you don't want the awkwardness of video feed goes down, hey, sorry for the technical difficulties, and you don't have a plan for what to do. That's not good, it's bad, bad, bad. So make sure that you just have a contingency. So that's it, those are the things that I would suggest to you do that and that's it for me remember if god can speak through a donkey he can speak through you i'm gonna head inside and see my family we'll see you next time